PDF Toolbox has the possibility to create lots of pre-flight profiles, checks, fix-ups, process plans, imposition layouts. But how do you efficiently organize those and don't lose your way? Well, for this, libraries were invented. To work with them, we'll open the Profiles window. And you can do that by going to Tools and then clicking on Profiles. Or you can use the Command 3 or Control 3 on Windows shortcut key to open that window. At the top of the Profiles window, there is an indication of the library we are currently looking at. When you click on that, you'll get the full list of libraries. And it's important to realize that even if you just installed PDF Toolbox, you will already have some default libraries. The list you see here in your version of the software may actually be different than what you see here. Depends on which version you have of PDF Toolbox, it depends on when you have installed it, and so on. To switch between libraries, simply go to another library in the list, click on that, and you will see a different list of checks, fix-ups, profiles, and so on. So what is inside a library exactly? To see that, we need the same list of profiles, but now we're going to go to Manage Libraries at the bottom. By clicking that, you open the Manage Libraries window. By default, the window opens showing the libraries that are available. This is the same list I had in my pull-down menu in the Profiles window. But underneath that, you see a long list of items, and all of these items are actually stored inside your libraries. So all of your profiles, checks, fixes, actions, variables themselves, and a whole bunch of resources like output intents, curve files, and position files, all of those are stored in your library. But let's stick to the libraries list for a moment because what I want to show you is how we can create our own library, not the ones that come with the software, but a library for a particular project that I'm working on, a library for all the items that I'm currently testing. Any of these applications would work. Creating a new library is as simple as in this library's list, at the bottom, looking at the first button that we have there, because that one will actually allow me to create a new library. And as you can see, when I'm creating a new library, I need to give PDF Toolbox some essential information. And I'm going to start with a name, I will call this for testing, and then I can add a description to that, uh, which is purely optional, but can help you figure out what you actually stored in this library. So I could write something like profiles that are still being tested. I could lock a library. What is more important right now for our new library is that I can change the color of this library. And that means that the window background, for example, for the profile window and the color of the text that you also see on this profile window, that I can change that. So I could have a purple background and, for example, a white text. And then the last bit I have to select is which initial set of profiles I want to have in my library. And as you can see, all the default libraries are there. So if I want a copy of what was in one of the default libraries, I can select Essentials or PDF Standards or Device Link and so on. What we want to do here is create a new library. And then I have to choose either Empty Library, which would give me a library that is completely empty, or empty library with resources, which would be a library without profiles, checks, or fixes, but with some of these other resources like imposition configs or curve files or output intents in there. What I'm going to do here is create a completely empty library. And that library appears now in my list. You can see that PDF Toolbox already shows it to me on the right-hand side in the profile window as well. So I'm simply going to go OK. And then PDF Toolbox tells me that I have made changes to a library. And am I OK with that? I will OK that. And I have a library that is completely 
empty. But of course, in all likelihood, there are going to be checks and fixes and maybe in position layouts that you already have in other libraries that you might also want to have in here. So how do we go about that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to go back to my list of libraries and go back to my manage libraries. So in this manage libraries window, if I go to checks, I will get to see two lists. On the left, I get the list of all checks in my active library, which is the for testing library that we just created. And on the right, we get the list of all of the checks in a different library. And currently that is the PDF standards library, but I could go to essentials, for example, and then I get the checks in the essentials library. And now what I can do is I can select a single check or I could do a shift selection of multiple checks. And with this button that I have in the middle between these two lists, I can copy all of those checks into the library I'm working with. If I also wanted a fix up, for example, that is as simple as going there and then doing the same thing for this fix up. When I'm satisfied that I've copied everything that I want to have in my for testing library, I click OK. I get that same warning about changes having been made to a library. And when I click OK, my checks that I copied and the fixes that I copied now appear in my library and I can continue to work with them. I can now fill my library with all the checks that I'm interested in and create some profiles in there and some process plans. But at some point, this library might reach a point where I actually want to share it with someone else. How do I do that? There are multiple ways you can do this. The first is I can go back to my library list and then say export library. The second thing I can do is I can go back to this manage libraries window that we saw before, make sure that my list of libraries is selected. And then at the bottom, I also have an export and an import button. So let me select the export library menu item for this. And I will put that into a folder. And then when I move this out of the way, you'll see that in my files folder, I now have a file with an extension KFPL, and that is a Callus PDF Toolbox library file. This file can be exchanged with someone else. It can be exchanged between Mac and Windows. And in that file, you have the complete contents of everything that was in this library. Before we end this video, there is one last trick I need to show you. Having multiple libraries is really cool. And from an organizational point of view, it solves a lot of problems. But there is one problem that you might run into, and that is search. As you probably know, I can type something in this search field. And so if I'm looking for a profile. I could go to the profile window and then say, I'm looking for a profile containing grayscale, but that profile is not in my library. So what I would have to do is run over all of the libraries in here and try to find the one that contains a profile with the word grayscale in the name. That's not very user friendly. And as an alternative to that, what I can do is click this search all libraries button. And as long as this button is active, PDF toolbox will show you the search of all of the libraries on the system. It shows me any profile that contains the word grayscale. And it shows me which library that action lived in. So if now I want to use that in my library, all I have to do is go back to manage libraries, go to profiles. My library is selected on the left. 
I now know that my item is contained in prepress color and transparency. And here is my convert to grayscale profile. And by clicking the button, I copy that into my library. And if I go back to my list and I disable this search in all, you can see that this profile has now been copied into my own library and I can use it from here. This should get you started with organizing your items in PDF Toolbox in libraries. As you create more things, you'll find this feature more and more. Complex.